the move, which is why I'm a big fan of silver. I'm, I'm more heavyweight silver than anything else. When they start to move, silver could pop to that 45, you know, $80 level, potentially even higher. Uh, silver is kind of that, you know, feather in the cap. If you've got it and it does pop, you're going to make a fortune. Uh, and that's why a lot of people have it. It seems like it's one of the most undervalued metals out there. It's just constantly pounded and held down, yet it's the probably the most held. Everybody just keeps accumulating it. So uh, I like silver and it's got that explosive move. Uh, and that's why most of us have a good chunk of it. Uh, so there's some really exciting times for metals and, and miners in general. But I still think it's another month or two away before they everything's confirmed and they are a trade and a real play going forward. I think by the end of the year, we're going to have that confirmation in metals of, hey, is this the new bull market leg higher? And that's when gold could potentially run to 25, 2600. Um, these are big patterns, multi-year patterns. They don't happen in a week. They take a couple months or, or sometimes in a, a year to unfold to the next stage, right? And so we are in this boring, sideways, declining stage in precious metals as a pause. Um, and we just got to wait for it to turn that corner. And then we should be off to the races for uh, several months. Yeah, so when, when we look at silver, silver moves um, – Pretty interesting. It has these parabolic, these explosive moves. Gold's more of a grind where silver can can really kind of just pop and take off in a huge way. And um, it becomes kind of a, a crowded trade, a main street trade. It's it, it attracts a lot of people who want to get into a speculative, really interesting, you know, how to make a lot of money fast. And it, it's always had that. And that's why it creates these big movements. So when silver starts to move, which is why I'm a big fan of silver, I'm, I'm more heavyweight silver than anything else. When they start to move, silver could pop to that 45, you know, $80 level, potentially even higher. Uh, you never know where these type of, of plays are going to go. You look at the last spikes that we've seen in silver over the last like 20 years. I mean, when it spikes, I mean, the next one, like, you know, we could get up to that $80 per ounce in silver, which would be absolutely amazing. Uh, and that's just based on kind of chart patterns and momentum. Um, if there is actually some type of currency or some other type of issue, we could see it go a, a heck of a lot higher. But um, uh, silver is kind of that, you know, feather in the cap. If you've got it and it does pop, you're going to make a fortune. Uh, and that's why a lot of people have it. It seems like it's one of the most undervalued metals out there. It's just constantly pounded and held down, yet it's the, probably the most held. Everybody just keeps accumulating it. So uh, I like silver and it's got that explosive move. Uh, and that's why most of us have a good chunk of it. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, we are still seeing a series of lower highs and more or less lower lows in silver. So it's not in a new uptrend just yet. Uh, when we zoom out to the big picture of silver, uh, we can see here uh, silver's trading in this large bull flag pattern. It just came down to long term support around this 22 level and uh, quickly reversed back up. So maybe we've put in a bottom. There are a couple of other leading indicators. When we take a look at, for example, like silver miners, um, silver miners are, are starting to come back to life. Now, they haven't made higher highs just yet. Uh, but when we take a look at gold miners, which I like to look at gold miners as the kind of the true leading indicator, uh, they have broken a previous high that we saw last month. And so gold miners are really starting to break and run to the upside. They're above this blue line, which is the 50-day moving average, which is a pretty critical level. Typically, once you get above it, you can start a new uptrend. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. And so we are above uh, that level, and gold miners are usually the first to run. And then we kind of see gold and uh, silver miners and, and silver, physical silvers, sometimes the last one to actually really break out and confirm a new uptrend. So it's kind of a nice leading indicator, especially if you like silver, because you can kind of get involved in it before it really fully turns around um, because of these looking at these uh, leveraged plays on uh, precious metals. Yeah, so to, to confirm the uptrend, ideally we want to see two previous highs broken. So if, if we were to look at this chart, and silver is pretty volatile, so it requires a, a couple big moves. Uh, more or less, um, we, we could argue that this is a high. We had this sell-off and this reaction high as it made new lows after that. Uh, and then we've got this second high. So typically we want to see two previous highs uh, get broken. So the, the market has run up hit this resistance level, pulled back, and then busted through it. And so now we're coming up to this next level here, which is around the $25, which is 
you know, it's a it's a pretty ho- solid number. Typically, people at five dollar increments and ten dollar increments for metals, um, they act as resistance when you're below them. They act as support when you're above them. Uh, so we are coming up to that resistance level. So if we can break through twenty five, the first pause or pullback after that can be bought. That'll be a shift in momentum. If something breaks through two two resistance levels, that means it's got some upward momentum. So that's kind of what we're looking for. A break of 25, the first pause or pullback can be bought, and it should have quite a bit of momentum to go back up to this, probably the 28 level, which is where the next major resistance level is going to be. So there's still some work to do in silver. It's in a downtrend, but long term, I mean, the charts look great. And this is like the very early sign that it might be turning around, but it is still trying to pick a bottom at this point if you're a short term, you know, speculative player. Yeah, gold charts very similar to silver. I mean, it's still making a series of of lower highs over the last several months, lower lows, and um, it's under, it's flirting with the 50-day moving average. It's under the 200-day moving average. So, I mean, it's still in a in a bearish phase. The the long-term chart is a major bull flag pointing to twenty five, twenty six hundred dollars over the next year or two. Um, but a, a short-term standpoint, it's really trading sideways. It's in like in a kind of accumulation stage where. Uh, investors and traders are kind of just swapping contracts. Everyone's trying to get repositioned, people giving up on it, new people moving in. When that process is done, which I I feel as though we are getting right to that turning point uh, as we go into the end of the year here, um, then we're we're gonna go higher. But again, it's it's stuck in that sideways to to bearish uh, trend right now. And uh, you really, I think it's just a waiting game. Wait for this momentum to shift, show us some higher highs, show us some higher lows, and now it's the definition of a new uptrend. And then from there on, um, hopefully we'll see it uh, take off. And so we're at this turning point where it looks like precious metals are at a long-term support zone trying to find a bottom. The dollar is at a long-term resistance area. Um, and, and it might run into resistance here. But overall, we just have that mixed signal because on a short-term basis, precious metals are starting to show signs of leadership, early, early leadership. Um, and um, they're, they're at support and they've had a very strong bounce. So we just need to see, I think it's going to take a few weeks to see what's going to happen. Our metal is going to pop and run higher and then have a bit of a pause or pullback and kickstart that new trend. Or are they going to actually reverse here in the next uh, week and start to sell back down? And we really just have to let the market do what it's going to do. And it's going to dictate if there's a trend reversal or not. And we just need to wait for that to unfold. And we see gold miners actually hold up and, and take leadership. That's going to be a, an even further indication that uh, precious metals and miners are becoming that defensive uh, kind of late bull market stage um, play for investors. The stock market shows a little bit of weakness and people move into the precious metals sector. Uh, that's a really good sign and that can last several months. So we might start to see miners and metals um, move a lot higher here. We're going to just have to let it play out over the next couple of weeks to get a gauge. Is there actually uh, people moving into these uh, metals and miners? as uh, the market struggles. And if so, I mean, that's a a good sign that this precious metals market is uh, starting its new uptrend. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. 
They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.